Good morning. Welcome to One Million Cups. Here we go. Wow, too cold this morning, I guess. Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to One Million Cups Albuquerque. Uh, we're here caffeinating entrepreneurs every Wednesday morning and helping you in your entrepreneurial journey. It's time to check in. Uh, so point your smartphone at the uh, QR code. After six check-ins, you can get a notebook. After three, you get a pen. All right, so the mission of One Million Cups is to lower the barrier of entry to entrepreneurs. So they need education, resources, and connection. It's a difficult thing to be an entrepreneur and you need some help along the way. And that's what we're here for. Um, so how do we do that? We work toward a national and local mission with guidance from the Kauffman Foundation. Um, they've trained our organizers and give us, given us a framework to um, coach our presenters. And uh, wherever you go in the country, if you drop into Million Cups, you'll find the format familiar, even if you don't know any of the people. We also take advantage of all the local resources in every community, which One Million Cups operates. So where are we in the Southwest? We're the only folks in New Mexico, but there's a bunch of other chapters, some of which I've been to physically in Texas. Uh, I encourage you to get on the road and uh, drop in a million cups some, sometime. Okay, so what are the key pillars? Presentations, not pitches. So your company's not flawless. Uh, I just heard this morning on the, on the news that Michelle Obama has a new book and says vulnerability is the key to relationships. So if you want to really form a bond with other people, don't conceal the things that are wrong with your company. Don't, don't conceal the challenges that you have. Reach out and ask for, for help. You're making that other person feel valued. And they probably, if they're in this room, they probably know somebody who could help you out if they can't help you out. Okay, so those are the authentic connections we're talking about. These, this is run for the community, by the community. We're all volunteers. We're not crazy altruists. We all get a lot out of running One Million Cups. And uh, we're radically and intentionally inclusive. All kinds of people doing all kinds of things. Um, from mom and pop brick and mortar operations to whiteboard companies to big ten pole companies that do us the courtesy of dropping in every once in a while and telling us what they're doing, even though they don't need anything from us. Okay, so this is our program. You can read it all. We're here to help everybody. So be helpful. Come here, offer what you have to offer, uh, help people along their journey, and the entire community will rise up together. That's the plan. And uh, along those lines, please apply to present. If you haven't presented recently or you're thinking about presenting, it's actually pretty easy. Just talk to one of the organizers. Uh, we'll coach you and we'll get you up here and make sure you look your best. Okay, here's the organizers. I'm Paul Sutter. Lisa Atkins is our host here at Fat Pike for eight years now. Uh, Eric Rins Whitmore, somewhere around, probably on Zoom, right? Uh, Adam is here and Sonia is on Zoom. So talk to any of us if you might be interested in presenting. Uh, don't wait for some big milestone. Uh, just get up here and tell us about your company. We'd also like to thank our sponsors, uh, Fat Pipe. Uh, it's been a wonderful host for us. Uh, Jason Collins Photography, always making us look good. Uh, more than organized, uh, Miriam Ortiz Pino, organizing your stuff and your mind, and also bringing uh, creamer. And uh, Foundation for Sustainable Living, keeping us caffeinated. Uh, unfortunately, all their Costa Rican coffee, coffee ships elsewhere. Uh, Noventum Custom Software Development, supplying custom software and donuts, and Invive Solutions when they're here supplying tea for you trying to shake off from under the demon team. <laughs> All right, that's it, and uh, I'll hand it back to you. Adam, you can come up and uh, introduce your partner. A holster. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. It's, my foot catches things too. Here. That's a deadly trap in there. Yeah, craziness. All right, well, good morning. Um, so today we've got um, uh, a lovely lady that has got a cool thing she's been starting to do. And uh, I've been, as I've been talking to her, uh, she's, she's been you know, working in the nursing industry for a while, but she's really excited about like, how she can take people from one place to another in their lives. And I think uh, that Eleni has just really done a great job of you know, kind of figuring out what she wants to do and has a lot to offer in this area. And she's just starting out. So it's exciting that she has been, you know, uh, adventurous enough to come in so early in her program. So Lenny, come on up. Talk about hope transitions. Okay. 
Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here and um, share with you uh, this beautiful dream um, that I have. And before I proceed with my story, I want to share with you how this logo started out. A long life friend from Brazil, she's actually from Cuba, but she's living in Brazil at the moment. She's over 65 years old, but I have known her for over 10 years. Um, she was the creator of this beautiful logo, all the way from Brazil to Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I am so grateful with her for this opportunity. Um, where do you press go further? You had it right. Yeah, Thank you. See. How did hope transition started? How this, this idea started? Um, as a child, I knew I wanted to be in the helping these people's industry. Um, I remember myself playing with my dolls and using a stethoscope to listen to the doll's heart and giving the doll medicine or giving them a shot, an injection to make them feel better. Um, I knew I wanted to be able to help people feel better. And it started with love, hope, compassion and support, the calling for, for that, because I consider myself as a charismatic, loving, caring and compassionate person. That's and right. when, when I started, um, it was even before high school, I volunteered in the community to help the senior population when they needed a ride to go to doctor's appointment, or they needed me to call to get them scheduled to see the doctor. I, um, I was giving to the community that love and that support that the senior community needed. Um, going forward, that led me to do a work as a nurse assistant in an assisted living center. And then that inspired me to go forward and become a registered nurse. Being a registered nurse and working inside rehab centers and everything that seniors go through in the transition process led me to this idea of creating this business, Hope Transitions. I became certified as a senior transition specialist in September of this year. Um, and then going forward, um, I see the huge need to support the senior population. They call it the gray tsunami. For this graph, in, 30, in 2035, there is gonna be more seniors in our population than kids or minors less than 18 years old. The need is huge. We need people to help our senior population as they transition through these milestones in their lives. Did you know how many seniors turn 65 every day? Who can tell me? How many seniors turn 65 every day? If no. you don't know the answer. 2,000. 2,000? No. Let's, let's review the answer. It is 10,000 people turn 65 every single day in the United States. The need is huge. That's why they call it the gray tsunami. I have a passion to help the senior community. They have contributed so much to our society. The least that we can do is give back and give, um, help them connect with the resources that they need to be able to transition in this life. How many of you have a mom or a dad, a grandpa or a grandma here? All of us, all of us. And have you faced this situation or do you know somebody that have gone to the hospital needing care? And then the doctor comes to them and say, I'm sorry, you cannot go back home. It's not safe for you no longer. And then that senior's life gets crushed and then they can get very sad and lonely. Just because of that phrase, the doctor told them, I'm sorry, you're no longer safe to go back home. You need rehab, you need 
being there in the community and being able to talk to the seniors and listen firsthand to their struggles and being able to connect them with the resources that they need is something so rewarding to me. This is something I wanna grow, not just in the state, but also nationally if possible. I need um, the knowledge because I'm studying. And that's why I'm here because I found in this group so much support. You guys help each other. I have seen in different presentations how you guys give your knowledge and your expertise to help people like me that wanna help and give back to the community. Business profit projection is 10 or 10K or more per month, 100 or more per year. And I am looking to serve four or more clients every single month. What are my business challenges? My business challenges are building a great referral system, knowing more people that can refer me to it. Last week I was here and um, Mercedes was the one that presented that beautiful presentation about dressing yourself so nice and beautiful. And I love the feedback. I connected with her and this week she reached back to me and said, Eleni, I have a family that might need your services. That is beautiful to help each other and connect. So far in my, in my business, I have not created a website or the business cards. People ask me, where is your business card? I don't have it yet. That's one of the things I need to do. I'm starting as networking and you know, getting myself out there and letting everybody know. But why supporting hope transitions? Or what is the vision I have for hope transitions? And I think I skipped some slides, but here it is, empowering seniors and their families with the knowledge and resources. Sometimes their families and the seniors are in such a hard struggle that they make the wrong decision, not the wisest and safest decisions for mom and dad or for themselves. So that's when I come in the picture and help them give them resources and give them the information so they can make informed consents or informed decisions on the next step in their lives. I like to support them, give them the hope that not everything is finished in there. I wanna share the story of this family that were facing hard challenges. Mom, she was working in the healthcare field, working all her life very hard, serving people. And then she became sick with cancer. Her daughter was, Working in the healthcare industry, she shared with me her struggles. And I was able to help this family find hope in the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of sadness and the anxiety they were facing. They trusted me to share my knowledge with them and they were able to make so wise decisions for mom's health and safety and they're more united than ever. It's a beautiful experience to see that, to be able to step in and help families to be together and reach decisions that are good for mom and dad. Sometimes people think, but why would you want to help someone to transition onto a senior living community? If you send people there to die, that's the stigma there is. But that's not true. I have worked in the industry and I have seen how much people care. Seniors, the statistics reveal that they live longer when you put them in, an, a, in a senior community because they get to interact with other seniors. They get activities, they get keep you occupied throughout the day. So it's an awesome opportunity. If you want your loved one to be care good 24 seven and feel happy and look forward to a purpose in life, don't fear that. I give them the tools, I show them, this is how it looks. And also when you um, do this kind of business, you're not working alone. You're working as a team with different, different people from different backgrounds because I am not a social worker or a care management. Um, I am not an um, investor or different people that can contribute to help that senior get from 
being unsafe at home to a safe place in a senior community. They help together, we work as a team to help them get there faster. So instead of waiting six months to help mom transition through that process, we can do it in weeks. And that is an awesome opportunity. So this is my presentation. I hope I can be of great service to the Albuquerque in New Mexico population and help so many seniors. That's my vision. That's my passion. That's my calling. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so anyone has questions uh, for Lenny, you can come up here and stand, uh, you can wait over here and then you come up and stand right behind Lisa here to ask your questions and we can get pictures of the contact information if you want. <laughs> I have the first question. Okay. Eleni, I'm not sure I understand exactly how you deliver your services. Is it a consultant to a senior person having to make decisions? Is it in-home care? Are you the healthcare provider for people who need assistance? Do you do both? Do you do it yourself? Do you have a staff? So, it is a connection. It's, it's like me being the middle person in connecting that senior with the resources that they need because every senior is in a different stage. So it's meeting them where they, they are at and finding solutions with them or for them and then referring them to the resources that they need. So being the middle person that support, that helps see the light at the end of the tunnel, something like that, I will describe, but yeah, I work with a team of people that um, will be able to help. So this is something that grows and that's how I'm visualizing something that is growing and, and expanding and helping as many seniors as, as we can. Got it. All right, come on up. Well, me, I'm Brian Steiner with Momentum Custom Software. Thanks for presenting. Uh, my question is sort of related to leases and it's, it's how do you get paid? Are you billing insurance? Are you charging the seniors directly? Or are you working with some other funding agency? Like how does your, you're actually getting paid? So the vision will be, or is, if the senior needs the referral, you know you work with different people and you refer that person to the resource that they need. That person is gonna pay me a commission for referring that senior to the help that they're getting. So I'm getting paid by the person that is being or helping that senior. So for example, if the senior needs to tap into the money of their house to be able to take or get the care that they need in a senior community, then I will connect that senior with people that help them in that process. And that person is gonna give me um, referral fee or some a, a referral commission for bringing them to them. So it's, um, it depends on the senior's case. You know, not everybody is the same. Now, if there is a senior that needs guidance to a elder care attorney, so they can plan their, their end of life care or all the decision, important decisions they need to make, I will refer them to that elder care attorney to help them. You know, so it's like a referral system kind of process. So I, where I'm the middle person, I'm connecting with the senior with the appropriate person that will be able to help them get where they want to be. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Jason, Colin, you have a, a comment. Let's have you go next. Oh. <clears throat> My comment was for business cards, um, since you already have a logo, I think it's pretty easy to, even with some without formal graphic design skills, you can just put your logo on there with your contact information. And I think it's a good idea for your type of business to hand out a physical card rather than relying on them typing something on their phone or trying to remember something. So I think a business card is something you can find an afternoon to do or even less than that without any real graphic design skills and with plenty of uh, online options and stuff too. Or you know, I could easily design one like I have my own business card too for you if you needed help with that as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, Miriam Ortiz, you know, with More Than Organized. Um, adjacent style services, although I don't, 
the aging population isn't my main focus, but have you connected with senior move managers and professional organizers um, to have them on standby for helping with the transition is one thing because they, they're great at referring back and forth. Um, and second, you might want to look at creating some sort of package mm -hmm. around what you offer. So it's not so, I don't know, let's see, let's leave it up in the air. And I have no idea how long or how much or where the funding will come from, but having a few kind of standalone, I'll help you move, I'll help you sell the house and liquidate your assets, I'll help you with the health, manage the health care or something that mm -hmm. just allows you to have more of a flat fee and have a little more control over how much money you're making and how much time it's taking you. That's so very consistent. Important. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I um in your question or is that I just wanted to to mention that that there's these resources. Yes. Um and I didn't know if you had thought about that yet. Yes. And and that's the reason why I'm coming to these meetings so I can connect with other people. And I know you're an organizer mm -hmm. and um uh, Adam is. Adam is an organizer, <laughs> so that's awesome. I mean, I'm already meeting people that can, you know, work as a team and help build this up and help this grow. So it's, yes, and I love the idea of building a presentation, like a portfolio or, you mean like Packages. a flyer? Or? No, I mean, um, just in your own mind, when you're talking to clients and, and selling them on your services that they can pick from, three or four offerings rather than let's see what happens right right because they're overwhelmed and they need someone to just break it down really quickly. so providing something yeah. visual that they can see and refer back to where i detail yep. the services that i provide or how i can be of help yes perfect thank you that's You're awesome uh, keiko i'm gonna get sue to ask her question online Eleni, I made a comment that, <clears throat> where were you when we needed you when we transitioned? My mother, um, who's now 92, it took us months to do all that organization. So how do we find you and how do you target your audience? So thank you so much. I wish I was there to help you through that process when you needed it. I'm sorry I was not there, um, but that's what I want to do. I want to be there for the people that need me. and. The way I'm doing it is connecting, it's just networking word of mouth. That's what I'm doing right now. I know um, to get myself out there, I need to build a um, website, um, promote it on social media and get to know more people because I know if I do more networking, we can refer each other and help and you know help as many as many people as we as, as we can. I share my phone number and email address in the slide and um, that's a way you can con contact me or if you know a family that need my services, I am more than willing to help. I, I'm targeted at helping and provided the support that people need. So thank you. I, so I, much. Have, you bet. I have one suggestion for you. And so before people transition out of their home, they have at home caregiving service. And there are several of those um, in our community that you might want to reach out to. So because they're there working with them at home and they're going to know when they're going to have to transition into um, more assisted living. You are so right. You're so right about that. And the biggest challenge I have found on doing that is how do I know what houses have caretakers in their house? That is, you know, I'm, I'm suggesting actually reaching out to um, home health care companies okay. that um, and, and tell them about your service, because I'm sure that they are presented with this problem um, once the, the people they're taking care of need to transition. So it'd be awesome to give them a solution when they know that their, their clients are having to transition. I agree with you, and that's a great idea. Thank you so much. I'll do that. Thank Go ahead. you. Come on up. All right. How are you? Good. So I think I'm going to expand on the package idea too, because I think that's really, really crucial. Because you being kind of the middle person that's connected to these companies, you need to find a way to make you the reason why they're going to come to you instead of just going straight to them. 
See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So whether it's like these pack, because instead of them going to this one person, they're just gonna get this one service. But with you having a multitude of connections, you could say, these are the packages, your packages connecting this service, this service, this service, to make one coherent thing instead of get, save, pretty much saving them the heartache mm -hmm. of having to go to this person and then go to this person and then go to this person. You have it all tied together because that's what you do, yeah. you know? So I think the package idea is amazing because sometimes being the middle person is kind of tough because they might be like, oh, why don't I just go over there? But you're like, oh, I why don't they everything together? It. You're right. And yes. with the people that you're working with, I'd love to talk with you because yeah. I like to be part of some of those packages. Thank you. <laughs> makes total sense. You're getting lots of recommendations online for online business cards. So we'll make sure you have the chat. I think there's three different ones. I'm just going to step in here and you need to connect with Altrius because she has done lots of work in home health care and probably knows the Albuquerque market very well. I'm Lauren and Altrius. <laughs> We're all saying hi to you. You want to unmute? <laughs> Say hi back. Oh. Mark Pantak, you had a, a comment. Would you like to uh, share? Oh, there she goes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> hey. How are y'all doing? I, I don't know if you can hear me or not. not yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, I love it. to connect with you and give you some I, good ideas and how to help you and everything with your business. Ah. And I'll put my information in the comment. That sounds great. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Mark Pantek, would you like to share your comment? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Uh, good suggestions. Great support, really proud of Eleni having the courage because it is overwhelming as well when you have a new business and all the things to do, especially when you come from a medical profession, nursing background, and it's not quite the same as a business background. So there's so much to learn in the transition and building the relationship. So it takes a lot of courage just to be willing to be vulnerable and get out there and ask for help. And you've got, I can see you've got a great organization. And so I know that people are talking about the home health care, which is a good suggestion. But uh, because I've got a background in the real estate industry, what's also very helpful are the facilities themselves. Because when you have a senior, I just dealt with this with my own mother and uh, she passed recently. She was in her 80s. But uh, when you have somebody who is in a position that there's these expenses and they don't have the, the liquidity. Also, the um, government has all kinds of requirements where basically you can't have certain assets. So part of the process I've seen in my own experience is it's important to be able to help with just organizing like somebody else mentioned. And my mom was a bit of a pack rat and was really attached to her things. And so that's been difficult, plus pets, plus there's just so many different pieces of it, the elder care and just all the different. So it's such a very needed service. And with a lady's background with nursing, that's just perfect to be able to bring all this together. She just needs to get up the support that she's getting right here today with the business card, with all that. And so uh, I would say the facilities that are the uh, care facilities, they need to get paid. And so the number one way that they get paid is uh, a person selling their home. And then that's a timing type thing. So I agree with everything that's been said to Eleni with the support to, to put together eventually the website, but I, it just, I'm very proud of her courage just being here and, and seeking the help with all these different things. So I think it's very good. You, I think your organization is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for coming and presenting. And I'm just kind of, I'm going to ask another question before I ask the last two questions, which is what have you really enjoyed about like this new venture and uh, this new business? What's really lit you up about it? Seeing a smile on the senior face them hugging me and saying thank you thank you for helping me through this process thank you for making it so easier on me and um and helping me get where i needed to be where i thought was impossible and i was afraid of the unknown you helped me paint the picture 
and now I can see something more beautiful and I can look forward to my life. That's my greatest joy in doing this. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we have two more questions, red or green. Oh, Christmas. <laughs> okay, and then, um, that, which is, by the way, my favorite too. I, I like to have a whole mix of stuff. And then uh, what is it that our community can do to uh, help you? Thank you so much for helping me or letting me share with you this business idea um, for your support. I would love to be able to know more about your family and how I can help your family. I will able to meet you. I would like or love to meet you where you're at and know more about your family. That's the only um, desire that I have just to be able to help as many people as I can. And in fact, in a positive way, every single person that's around me, that is my desire. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hear that talked about events. Um, I know that Jason shared one online. Jason, you want to unmute and share your event? Everyone? Oh, uh, yeah. This weekend is uh, the annual Albuquerque Hat Tournament. It's for Ultimate Frisbee. It is Saturday and Sunday. I posted a link in the chat. Even if you have no Ultimate Frisbee experience, as long as you can run a little bit, it is open to even beginner players. Um, and it is a co-ed sport too. So men and women play on the same team. So it's a chance to get out. It'll be a bit chilly, of course, this weekend. But if you're ever curious about Ultimate Frisbee, it's a good environment to get a start in it. And uh, it's usually a great event. And it's a lot of fun and a way to get out and um, experience Ultimate Frisbee and meet a new community in the area. Plus, people do travel from out of state too to play in this tournament. Thanks. Sonia, you got some events you'd like to share? Yes. Um, Ashley, Elitris, do you want to uh, share with everyone about your event? You're, you're kind of breaking up. Do you want to turn off your video? That might work. That might help your sound okay. better. Okay. Let me turn it off. Okay. All right, now can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes that's better. Okay. Yeah, so um, uh, we're having a Boss Women Happy Hour this Friday at Vintage 423 at 6.30. And I can put the link in the comments, how to go register. And to, not, yeah, tomorrow is the deadline to register to an art to attend on Friday. And it's good Us. to be back here. <laughs> what is that? Huh? Tell us more about boss women. What is it? Yeah, so it's just pretty much uh, meeting other like-minded boss women and just sitting back and really getting to connect and know them and about what they're doing with a glass of wine or water or whatever booze you like to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Sonia, awesome. do you have other events to share? Yes. So, and I want to remind everyone this week is Global Entrepreneurship Week. So. If you can find, there are a few other events that I can't remember uh, that Eric, I'm sure would remember. But if you look up Global Entrepreneurship Week, you can search under New Mexico and find all the events that are happening. And that includes the Boss Woman Happy Hour. Um, now also tomorrow is also the We Mean Business Conference. Uh, it, it's out of Arrowhead. And normally they charge for the conference. This year uh, they have a sponsor, so it is free. It's uh, I'm putting the link in the chat, but those of you who are there in Fat Pipe, you could just search for We Mean Business Arrowhead and be able to find the link. And it's tomorrow, 1 to 5 p.m. And a lot of great speakers. Uh, yeah, it should be interesting. Thanks, Sonia. That's awesome. Um, we actually have, I can share our December workshop, this December, or this workshop we're going to do at the Bioscience Center, and it's Sarah Boivé, and she's teaching why market discovery comes before prototyping. She is actually hosting lunch, so if you'd like to come, you do need to register so we can have a head count. This is not one of those that you can just walk in. Um, please register. You'll find the event on the Fat Pipe website, 
um, and probably on Facebook too. Anybody else want to share an event? Anything cool going on? Do I have any new people who've never been here before online, online or in person? I don't think anybody in person. How about online? Raise your hand. No? But he's been here before. Awesome. Well, I guess we have extra time um, to talk and mingle this morning. Remember that we are not going to meet next week. We're going to take the week off for Thanksgiving. Um, so if you ring the doorbell in the morning on Wednesday, I'll buzz you in, but then I'll say hi and probably have to leave because um, there won't be an event. We do need presenters. We need lots of presenters. We've got a few in the queue, but nobody's responding inside the system to move forward. So if you would like to present your company, please um, apply online at onemillioncups.com or forward slash Albuquerque. Paul, you wanna close us out? Okay, so when I close this out, I like to take something that I just heard on the news and see how that applies to entrepreneurship. Uh, you're probably aware uh, that this morning, NASA launched Artemis 1, an unmanned uh, lunar mission. It's carrying a capsule with uh, mannequins in it, and it's going to orbit the moon for a while, uh, a lunar month, I believe, and then come back. Uh, so it reminds me of a story from the first moon program 50 years ago. All of you who are uh, building a team at your company are working with other people, and it's important to make them feel like they have a big goal in mind. So the story is that someone walked up to a janitor during the Apollo program at NASA and said, what are you doing? He was cleaning toilets at the time. And he said, I'm helping to put a man on the moon. So make sure that everyone on your team has the same sense of mission that you had when you started your company and you'll do fine. See you next week. Awesome. Thanks, Gal. Bye, everybody.